So to create the actual point cloud, um, and I was sort of using the improper term before because what you have before is just the 3D image capture. To create the point cloud, you need uh, the matter pack files and you need to use something called Autodesk Recap. And it's about $40 a month. Um, you get a 30 day free trial and you basically just drag and drop the matter pack files in and it creates it. So I'll go through that process right now. But basically what I have is <clears throat> in my project folder, I've got under my consultants, I've got the matter pack files that I got from the photographer. It's got all those images. It's got the OBJ file. And then in a different location, I've got um, a folder just of point clouds. And so in that folder, I've got subfolders with the name of the project. So if I go and let's see, come into Autodesk Recap, and I really don't know much about Recap, um, which is lucky, it just sort of works. If I do new project, import point cloud, we have to find a place for it. So I'm going to go and select the folder I just made. So then it's going to create the point cloud and some other um, accessory files in that folder. I'll proceed. All I do is I drag and drop the uh, matter pack folder into here. And hit import files. And I'll pause the video while it does some work. But basically it just takes a minute or two to process it. Okay, that took about two minutes, which is about the longest I've ever seen. Um, so it just processes the files. Once it's done, you get a big blue button over here that says Launch Project. So I click that, and this is what I get. So this is a new project. This is not the one that I was spinning around in a minute ago. So we'll start to look at this more um, as I start modeling. But here we see this is the point cloud. And you see it can get some of the exterior space a little bit, um, but for the most part, we're concerned with the interior and here I can see like you zoom in you can sort of see all the data points um, but basically we just want to do a save as and I'll give it the name of the address and saves as a dot RCP a recap file which is what we want and then what we're left with is the uh, the recap file itself and then the support folder. So those two things always need to stay together. And this one is extra. I think it actually saved along the way at some point. So I'm going to erase this new project support. But basically, you want your recap file and you want the support folder. And those just stay together in the same folder. So now in Revit, we go to Point Cloud. We navigate to the folder and we want to choose the RCP and hit Open. And it sort of places it right in the middle, um, this is a project where I've already sort of started my existing condition. So I've already drawn my property lines in. I have a, just some detail lines showing the general footprint of the house that I got from the survey. You can really do this at any point, the earlier the better. Uh, and now it's just sort of manually adjusting it. So if we come into section, you can sort of see the different lines and we want to move it down this is a split level, so it's actually going to be pretty annoying. So I'm going to, for now, I think what I see is the first floor is right about there. And I'm going to line that up in section with my existing first floor. If I come to the first floor plan, I should see the point cloud. And I can see also, I know just from this house that it's rotated. So I'm going to rotate it. 90 degrees because I know that the house orientation is like that so you do have to have a little bit of famili familiarity and I'm just going to drag it generally in place you know from the survey we have the exterior walls and it's listed as 21.1 feet so I have just a detail line showing that and like I said the point cloud is only going to show you the interior face of the wall so when we see this line that's the interior face of the wall this sort of going to help me figure out the exterior wall thicknesses but I don't know for sure so a lot of it is just educated guesses and then you will always have to sort of go back and verify a few dimensions in the field later. So this is just about where I want it and as I can see uh, the point cloud is actually bigger than the footprint that I've drawn of the building though I tend to trust the point cloud more than these surveys uh, definitely these real estate surveys a lot of times they'll say plus or minus one foot I've seen it say in in the past plus or minus three feet so they're not super accurate they're a good starting point but because the point cloud I can see is much larger than the footprint, I'm going to trust the point cloud and I'll go confirm that with a couple overall dimensions later. Uh, but for now, this is more than enough for me to get started on the existing conditions. I went through and cut another section and you can see I've done a better job of lining up the first floor finish with my level for existing first floor. Once you have it in the position you want, you can go ahead and pin it 
uh, which is right here. And then uh, you're going to end up toggling a lot. And in the next video, we're going to talk about actually modeling from this. But this tool down here lets you select pinned elements. So right now, the point cloud is pinned, so I can't move it, right? But I can still select it. Um, and sometimes that gets annoying when you're modeling. So if you click this one, you see I can't select the point cloud at all because it's pinned. So now I can just see it. Um, and that's really helpful as I'm beginning to model.